We're going to bring to the stage now Dan Rosen, the Global Ad Director for Telefonica. Hello, um, good afternoon, buenas tardes. Um, my name is Dan Rosen. I'm the Global Director of Advertising at Telefonica. It's a great pleasure to be with you today. Um, what a fantastic event it's been. I've really learned a lot about what's going on in LATAM, and I'm excited to be here. What I'm here to talk about today is some of the huge changes that are happening in advertising and how some smart brands can use context to get closer to their consumers. I was so happy to see when the, the theme of the event this year was about celebrating change because in my brief time at, at Telefonica, I've learned a lot about change. And about 30 years ago, Telefonica experienced a revolution in its core business and had to transform from a landline company into one of the largest uh, mobile network operators in the world, where we are today with over 300 million consumers. But now, there's a new revolution, and that digital revolution has mean that we've had to transform again into a digital telco. And some of the things that we're doing around that, we th I think, are, are really interesting. Um, so for example, uh, we help power some of the most connected vehicles using our M2M technology, like Tesla, for example. We help connect chronic patients in Peru remotely to hospitals. And we've managed to reduce hospital reentry times by up to 47% using our e-health solutions. Using our Dynamics Insight solutions called Smart Steps, we're able to, we're able to disrupt and understand how human traffic is moving in urban environments to help town planners and brands make better business decisions. And finally, our, our world famous Wira Academies where we have 12 academies in 10 countries. This is our startup accelerator where we're helping to create new startups that can not only help disrupt our own industry, but also disrupt other industries. But clearly it's not just telecoms that's been disrupted. And what I'm talking today is, is really about how advertising has experienced huge change. I believe that now we're in the age of context. And in that age of context, it's revolutionized not just the way that brands buy media, but also the way that stories are told in that media. Back in, back in the day, back, in, back at the start of media, I guess, it was very easy to understand the context of a person. You know, back with radio, the family would sit around the radio, they'd gather, and it's very easy to write stories to these people because you understand where they are. Then radios started moving into cars, and then they had to think about new stories to tell in cars, and they created drive time radio, for example. So again, context has always affected the way that stories have been told. Now, are there any telenovela fans in the audience today? Come on, guys. I've heard that this is the most popular TV show in the whole of Latin America. There must be some. OK. So, so telenovela is, is, is a gr great example of commercial TV. And with, with telenovela, as you can see, there is a mini cliffhanger before each ad break. There's a big, oh my god, moment that has to bring you back for the episode the next week, and, um, and so on and so forth. And what happens is that that obviously means higher prices for TV spots. That means more cash for TV companies. And ultimately, that means more shareholder value for TV companies. This is a business model that has worked for a long time. So then, by contrast, there is House of Cards. Are there any House of Cards fans in the audience? More House of Cards fans. Hurry up. I'm, I'm a fan as well. And you know, by contrast, House of Cards is, um, obviously, it's Netflix. It's a, it's a monthly subscription fee. So you don't need ad breaks. So there's no cliffhangers. There's no oh my god moments. It's actually at a slower pace. And the way that the story is told and the way that people consume the media is completely different. I don't know if you know this, but um, on Day one of season three, the current episode of House of Cards, 
Netflix occupied 45% of US internet bandwidth. I'll say that again, 45% of US internet bandwidth. I find that, that extraordinary. So, um, so we can see that context has always um, affected the story. And we can also see that, that mobile is now. But in, in 2015, people are obsessed by one thing, and that's their mobile. Does anybody recognize this? No? This is a mobile lane in Chongqing in China. Okay, you, you have, if you walk on the left there, that's where you can walk in safety of, not, of someone not walking into you. Um, and this on the, on the other side is the no mobiles lane, so this is the safety lane, right? But the, the reason I'm telling this is to say this is where people's attention are, right? If you look around the auditorium today, if you look at people, you know, I guess I'm probably fighting for attention from your mobiles. If I do a reasonable job today, you'll probably only look at your mobile five or six times during my presentation. But that's, that's, that's where we are. In 2013, Shell Israel and Robert Scoble wrote a book called The Age of Context. It inspired me, and I, I was really pleased to see that a lot of my colleagues at Telefonica were also inspired by this book. They predict that we're moving into a new era, which is being dominated by a new generation of technology, of personalized technology, that will get to know us better than some of our closest friends. And it's mobile that's unlocking social data, sensors, and location. And that, that's going to create a revolutionary relationship in the way that we interact with people, with objects, and the world around us. But, so mobile is now, and we're living in the age of context, but we don't see mobile as a channel. In the digital era, it brought us programmatic, and we're able to move from targeting channels to audiences. And um, we were able to unlock programmatic to do that. But in, in the era, in the age of context, and in the age of mobile, we're able to know so much contextual information about an individual that we can actually understand what it's like to be that individual at that moment. So we can actually communicate with them more than necessarily just target them. And that's why I think the, you know, the next generation of superstar creatives is not gonna be Don Draper and Peggy from Mad Men. It's gonna be about, it's gonna be about creative and technology, Mad Men and Math Men, to, to quote Martin Sorrell. So, um, at Telefonica, um, we have over 200 million customers in Latin America. And, you know, what does mobile mean to Latin America? Well, we think that LATAM is a mobile superpower. You know, we can see that, and we understand that today, LATAM is not a smartphone-first market, it's a feature-phone-first feature phone market. But the thing is, is that it's changing very quickly. And it's growing very quickly. And we know that by 2017, there's going to be more smartphones in Latin America than there are going to be feature phones. And that's going to be very powerful. And I think we heard Sir Martin Sorrell say this morning that he believes that we're going to move and in LATAM is likely to leapfrog the desktop era straight to mobile. We agree with him. And what we can actually see that being... Um, um, see that in, in the statistics that we're seeing about the region. In so how, you know, in terms of the behavior and how people are actually using their smartphone, do you think it would be bigger, more smartphone usage between Mexico and the U or the USA? Do you think it would be more in Brazil? Or do you think it would be more in Spain? Would you think it would be bigger in Argentina or Germany? You can see that, that LATAM is actually outperforming some of the more developed markets in some key areas. Also, mobile is starting to change the way that people shop. When you look at people comparing prices inside stores, we can see that it, it's, it's very distinct inside LATAM that it's actually starting to move ahead of some of the more, some of the more developed markets. Between 26 and 37 in, in some of the more developed markets, 40 up to 47 in, in Brazil there. And that's not just comparing price, but when you actually talk about speaking to and communicating with a family member inside the store, that increases again 
you can see between 24 and 39, but 42 and 55. Really extraordinary stats. So, so we can see that, that LATAM is a mobile superpower. Um, there, is a, there is a lady called Mary Meeker, who is sort of the poster child of mobile advertising, and, and people wait for her assessment of the mobile advertising market every year. And she's, she compares time spent on mobile phones with the advertising dollars that are flowing into our market. And she's seen in the US that it's roughly 24% of time is spent on a mobile, but only 8% of media dollars are going there. She calls that a 3x opportunity. When you, when you compare that with LATAM, we can see that um, it's a similar kind of picture. In Mexico, which is the most advanced mobile advertising market in LATAM, it's also a 3x opportunity between, between 7 and 20. And when you then look at where we are today with Brazil and Argentina spend on mobile advertising so low, we can see that that opportunity is even bigger, moving to um, a sort of a 7 or 8x opportunity. So we expect to see very big growth there. So we can see that mobile is a, that uh, LATAM is a mobile superpower. But I, I've established, or I think there are three rules that brands can follow if they want to win in advertising in the age of context. Uh, the first is related to connectivity. And I think a lot of people have seen uh, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs and how, and basically how um, what, things like Wi-Fi and battery life are becoming the center of our universe. And some smart brands have actually started to sponsor connectivity and sponsor, sponsor phones being charged in airports. And as we, it's really interesting just seeing the Spotify presentation, you can see the amount that people are streaming now is absolutely skyrocketing. People have never been downloading and been so hungry for data than they are today. And we can see, because we're a carrier, that over 25% on average across LATAM, people are coming to the end of their data tariff. This means that there is a, an unanswered need. There are people that are hungry for more data. And we think there's a big opportunity for brands to be able to provide relevance to their consumers by providing that connectivity. We think that sponsored data, we think that connectivity can be the next universal utility brand experience. One of our customers, Bradesco Bank in Brazil, for example, uh, they um, used um, sponsored data. What they were able to do, not just they used mobile, not just to increase the awareness of their app, and the number of people that downloaded their app, but actually they've, they've basically picked up the tab for their customers' data. So on the Bradesco app in Brazil, Bradesco pays for the data when people use their app. The people don't. So they can go and use their data for something else, whether it's listening to music or whatever it might be. And it's actually worked so well that they've since been advertising that on TV and telling people how fantastic that is. And the results are, are, are great. And there's a terrific report if you, if you want to know more, and my team on my stand are happy to, to share that with you. So that's rule number one. Connectivity is the new need. The second rule is around, it's, a, it's around data. And if you were to take out an ad, if you were to place a contextual ad 30 years ago, it would have been about placing a press ad um, next to a suitable piece of editorial. Now, as we've spoken, we move, as brands move from buying channels to buying audiences, all of that needs to be underpinned by great data. And we've seen a, a lot of that in, in, in the show so far. And often when brands are, are buying that data, they buy, they buy data from all sorts of third-party sources. And it can basically be unauthenticated. The problem is, is that when you buy unauthenticated data, that can lead you to communicating the wrong message to the right person. And people can be disappointed with the way that you're communicating um, with them because you're not, it's not based on the right kind of insights. So the best form of data that you can have is authenticated data. That is, data that's authenticated by billing address. As a telco, we have access to um, authenticated billing data, which means that we know that you are you. And not just that, we have access to certain behavioral data so we can understand not just how your 
behaving online, but also how you're behaving offline, and some of the great contextual opportunities that I've spoken about already. Um, and we partner with um, um, our sister company, Axonics, to take our data into the programmat programmatic market to unleash that. So that's the second rule. Get closer with high quality data. Make sure you're talking to the right people. Finally, um, the, the, the third rule is around creativity. And uh, three years ago, I, I spoke at the Cannes Lions Festival, and I spoke about the, the key behaviors amongst mobile users and how um, brands should see it. And I, I, I thought that you could see that they are then kill time, save time, or they can use it for prime time. And whilst that's, those core behaviors have actually stayed, and um, whilst those are still true today, the technology has moved on. But you know, unfortunately, um, the, there's still a lot of desktop thinking that's going into mobile creativity. And we have such a fantastic opportunity here to be able to use this contextual information to be able to create the kind of messages that people haven't seen before, really, in new ways. Um, it, behind me is an example of, of a service that's recently launched in Spain where people can actually launch uh, and order a, a product directly to where they are, not to their home address or their work address, but actually where they are. Here's an example of them getting a delivery on the beach. You know, I'm not saying that this is necessarily right for all brands. I'm just saying this is a different way of thinking about targeting advertising. It's a different way of thinking about contextual creative. And it's something that, you know, I think all of the, with all of the great and the good of, of, of the LATAM media and creative industry today, it's something that, you know, we might be able to, to do something about. And, you know, Telefonica would love to help however we can to do that. Because I think there is a, a whole new generation of creatives out there who have yet to really express themselves with this contextual data, with this contextual information. And I think there's a, a really big opportunity to, to elevate what we do. I'll quickly share a, a case study with you now that was actually done in Guatemala a couple of years ago, which I think is a, a great example um, of contextual creativity. It's got quite a loud soundtrack, so it might wake you up a little bit, if nothing else. Yeah, I'm in the Nike store. There he is. He's getting the message. There's a promotion for Beatback. I think so. Yeah, yeah, we got him. Big Meatpack is the trendiest shoe store in Guatemala, a brand known for its edgy, cutting style and a store known for its unique discounts in limited edition kicks including brands like Adidas, Nike and Reebok. An icon for the sneakerhead subculture with over 60,000 fans on their fan page in less than a year. They needed to launch a new promotion to lift up to their hardcore fans, an innovative way to earn your discount. We created Hijack, an enhancement for the official Meatpack app used by our customers. Using GPS tracking technology that marks every competitor's store of the brand sold at Meatpack, so every time one of our sneakerheads enters one of the stores, it triggers a special notice with a promotion. Hijack sends an alert to the person's mobile with a discount that starts at 99% and decreases by 1% every second that goes by, making the countdown stop until you reach our store. More than 600 customers were hijacked from the competitors in a week. One customer, Pedro Rodriguez, got a record-breaking 89% discount. This is the first promo campaign that started the sale in the competitors' stores. What a... A, a great piece of creative from the guys. And, you know, it's happening here in, uh, in Latin America and Guatemala. What a, what a fantastic piece of creativity. So um, just to summarize um, with you today, um, you know, th the three key rules um, of how to, uh, to advertise in, in the age of context. The first, connectivity is the new need. Um, we're looking for beta partners for our sponsored data product, and our team on the stand will be very happy to talk to you about that. Secondly, Get closer with high quality data. Make sure you understand who your customers are. We, um, speak to us and our partners, Axonics, on our stand at Saud as well. And then finally, context unlocks creativity. And uh, you know, with the people that we have in this room today, um, you know, I think there's a real opportunity to unleash this contextual data and do some 
really brilliant thinking so that you know, we're not still talking about this Guatemalan example in two years as well. So um, that's it from me. Um, thanks very much for your time. Um, we, as I said, we're looking for beta partners, and these are some of the brands that we're already working with. Um, please come and talk to me and my team outside if you get the chance. Thank you very much. Oh, Stan. Thank you very much, Dan. Don't disappear yet. We, we, okay. we can have some questions. Sure. I thought it was quite an enlightening presentation myself. So Great. I'll, Thank I'll, you I'll very ask much. the uh, I'll ask the audience first. Do we have any questions out there? We must have some. Where's my favourite row? Fourth row. Oh, front row now. Oh, I like this. Here we go. Do we have a, a microphone right at the front there for us? Are you just foxing me? You were in that row earlier, weren't you? I like that. That's good. Um, what do you think is that? Uh the correlation or the reasons for the region not to have higher uh, buying power when they're using their mobiles. Like you mentioned, like we spend the most time on our phones, but there is not actually spending dollars while they're using their phones as opposed to other regions. So like here in the US that you can easily buy things on your phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, that's the, the million dollar question. Right? I, th I think that it's a, it's a great question as well. And the question we should all be asking here, you know, we can see about the gap, we can see the opportunity, we can see where people's attentions are. You know, why do I think it's happening? I think that, I think that being a marketing director is quite complicated compared to how it was 30 years ago. I think there's a lot to consider. I think a lot of brands have just got their head around online. Then um, something comes along called mobile, and then programmatic comes along at the same time. And I think there is, um, uh, I think there is a lag. I don't think that lag will last long. And I, ho I hope I've explained in some of the stats that I've spoken about already that we believe that it's going to ramp up. And we think that with the way that LATAM users are using mobiles, the way that they're actually almost leapfrogging desktop to a certain to a certain extent that actually it's got the opportunity to grow even faster than other markets. So whilst I think there's a lag at the moment, we think that it's going to accelerate and grow quicker once it, once it does start catching on. You know, I think that um, the things that will help, help it move faster are things like measurement, things like metrics, and things like education amongst a lot of marketers to make sure it can happen. Does that help answer your question? Okay, well, listen, I mean, it's a, it's a fascinating subject, and I'd be very happy to talk to you about it outside afterwards. Yeah, that's a great no question. Problem. I mean, measurement is quite an interesting one, isn't it? Because it's kind of, at the moment, it's kind of a bit wild west in terms of measurement. And, and you mentioned education as well. Yes. I suppose one of the, the key issues that I find frustrating, because we obviously report on the industry, is there yeah. are some amazing things you can do with mobile, and yet not enough brands are putting enough budget into mobile campaigns. Is there, what, what do you think the real reason for that is? Honestly, I think, I think it's, it's a number of things. I, I think measurement is an issue, but I think that, um, you know, because it hasn't, you know, in some markets, like, you know, Mexico is, you know, as, we, as I said before, I hopefully explained that Mexico is starting to emerge faster with, at 7% of spend. Argentina and Brazil, I think it's just a, just a matter of time, really, before the, the, uh, the brands have no choice but to, but to, um, but to adopt mobile, right? Because yeah. mobile is one of those areas where, Consumers are ahead of brands. They are moving faster and using mobile in different ways that brands just have really haven't had the chance to catch up yet to understand how they use it. Well, and that's not just across social media and mobile. That's on lots of different um, areas and, and facets of mobile. So I think it is going to happen. I think education is right. Um, measurement, getting that right, will will uh, will help solve things. And you know, at Telefonica, we're here to help and we're here to discuss this opportunity with any brands as and when if they want to. Look at that, sales pitch, and I didn't even prompt that one. Uh, <laughs> we like it. Uh, do we have any more questions from the audience? Oh, yes, we do, excellent. Great. I think it was another, was there one there as well? Hi, Daniel, congratulations for the presentation. From Hi there. Paul. I would Thank like you. to have your opinion about a different kind of advertising. I mean, uh, you, you've been, uh, telling us about uh, how effective is the mobile uh, devices for uh, advertising, advertising on the go, may I say, and when the consumer is probably more receptive for receiving some price promotion, which uh, clearly it's 
uh, mobile a, a great uh, a great medium to 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 communicate yes but um, I wonder uh, if it's also so effective for other kind of advertising like uh, a corporate or uh, to develop brand equities I mean probably when you are on the go I imagine that you are not so receptive so those kind of advertising even though it seems quite important for us as a marketer no, I mean, to develop what... other equities mm -hmm. rather than price. Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic question. You know, I guess performance versus brand or sales promotion versus brand advertising. And the answer is that um, it really depends on what the example is. I think that, yes, uh, for, for sales promotion, it's been proven to be effective. For performance, it's already hugely effective. That's where most ad spend is today. You know, I'm sure everyone's aware that app downloads is where a lot of the economy is in, in mobile advertising. Brand advertising is, is, is starting to kick off in a much bigger way, and that's why the metrics and measurements are important. There are countless case studies of how mobile can increase brand equity and brand love um, significantly more than other channels. Um, the, there's a fantastic MMA smock study, which I'm very happy to share with you after this today, which can show how a dollar spent in mobile for branding can work compared with a dollar spent on other media. It's not about being better than other media. The fact is, mobiles, mobile should sit amongst other media. It can be a glue that helps bind other media together, but it can definitely also be used as a brand building channel in its own right. Um, I think the, the fact that the growth of smartphones are going to help that. And um, yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of good case studies that I'd be, me and my team would be very happy to share with you afterwards about how it can um, increase brand love. And with regards to KPIs, you know, I completely agree. A brand doesn't care about clicks. You know, I, I think that the, the, the guys before from, um, from Media Method talking about this or Nafipa, brands don't care about clicks. A brand's KPI is not clicks. They don't care. What they care about is people buying their product and, and they care about people loving their brand, right? And so I think to a certain degree, the digital economy is a bit guilty of just continually talking about clicks and views when actually we need to start talking a different language that they've been using in TV very successfully for many years about how, how TV can help elevate brand love. And um, I think it's just because we're not a very mature medium, but I, I completely believe in the ability to build brands on mobile. Okay, good answer. Do we have any more questions? Okay, well, give, join me in giving uh, Dan a big round of applause. Thank you very much, Dan. Much. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.